this is Hope Mike and we are proud to be back with you once more and today I have a very special guest Miss Nancy Charles I'm not going to introduce her and give you her title because she's a lady of many titles but I think Nancy is uh, very well known to most St. Lucia by now um, as I've always said our time goes so quickly so I'm going to get to the meat of the problem once and for uh, as quickly as possible. <coughs> uh, I have a couple of questions for Nancy. Um, Nancy, your United Workers Party have chosen some eight, or should I have, uh, the last I've heard, you had eight confirmed members of um, candidates for your various constituencies. I have since heard that another seven or, or so have been fully earmarked but not disclosed. Um, can you bring us up to scratch as where you are now with your candidates? And I'm trying to ask you to get to the meat of the question, how ready is United Workers Party for the upcoming general elections? Okay, well, let me take this opportunity to say thank you so much for inviting me to be on your show. And let me say good evening to our viewers. Um, thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. The United Workers Party, it's um, ready and getting ready. Whatever little checks and balances that we still have to put in place for the elections, we are currently doing that. Um, and to answer your question, we have at our nas last, um, National Council, sorry, we endorsed um, seven candidates and then we do have quite a few other candidates, but that, that will remain a secret until we are ready to disclose to the public who those other candidates are. But we are definitely um, putting everything into place to ensure that um, should Honorable Dr. Kenny Anthony decide to call elections at any time, the United Workers Party is ready. Good. Now, Nance, tell me something. Um, walking around St. Lucia, there are rumors amongst all levels indicating that the economic suffocation which is taking place has people going absolutely crazy. Um, are you familiar with that statement? I am, actually, because I am in the business sector, um, so I, I hate all the time. I hate sometimes from some of our local suppliers. I hate from our local customers. Um, so it is something that is being spoken about quite often. Now, tell me something. Um, as you said, you, you were in the, well, you're in the wholesale business, yes, right? Yes, we yeah. are. Um, well, you were a fairly good barometer as to what is really taking place in the business community. Um, wholesalers, as far as I know, the best of my knowledge, they sell goods at a wholesale price and they have people retailing. Um, how do you find the, first of all, the actual customers who buy from you um, when they have to pay for their goods? Would you say they're under stress? And, and also the, other, the additional question is, how, what is their feedback towards the people to whom they, they sell the goods? Mm -hmm. Um, on, a, on a general basis, um, the customers, they're definitely feeling the pinch. Um, I would like to say that we were here um, before the implementation of VAT and after the implementation of VAT. And for sure, you can see that there is an impact or there has been an impact of the implementation of VAT on the cash flow of especially some of those small customers that we have. Um, small business people so um, obviously um, they are struggling um, you sometimes as a business have to extend your credit um, line to some of them and give them extended credit because in certain instances sometimes they are not able to pay you on time and in certain instances instances not only are they not able to pay you because they have sold the goods but in some instances the goods are still on the shelf and you find that consumers are now looking at their dollars and cents because remember people now out of every dollar they can they, they can only now spend their 85 cents you know so at the end of the day we definitely see that there has been an impact in that um, if you go around and you speak to business people 
um, a lot of businesses are still struggling they're still trying to recover um, manufacturing also manufacturers are also um, trying to recover because previously maybe you had um, certain um, importation duties that maybe they didn't have to pay and now they now have to pay the VAT upfront upon the point of importation so these things have had an impact on the business community now you know <coughs> I've said to, to many people before um, due to the fact that my office is sort of centrally located and I'm relatively well known in St. Lucia I, I, I get a number of requests from people on a daily basis either coming for financial assistance or some sort of suggestion as to what they can do uh, because they find themselves in a hole and as a matter of fact only yesterday I got a very um, I would say respectable individual who came to me and I spent almost an hour and a half with her um, listening to her stories she was actually a retailer and you know she had this individual had put virtually her, when I say her life savings, um, maybe um, it is her life savings to a certain extent because what she has done <coughs> is um, money she had saved uh, because she's a lady in her late 40s and she put into the business and because of the slow turnover and uh, the um, people not paying on time, she found herself into difficulties. And I could not help her uh, because I felt you were one of the few people I could actually ask this lady to go to. Can you just highlight a little bit on the individual, what her problems were? Mm. Um, and, and, and this issue is not only um, this lady in particular. Um, being in the business of the wholesale and you're interacting with customers, these are stories that we hear all the time. In a nutshell, the basic issue is cash flow, where you find that they wish to purchase goods and they need to pay back for it so that they can purchase some more um, and, and they find themselves that they're being strangled because maybe they do not have the level of turnover that they need to be able to, 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 to purchase it. Maybe even also to a certain extent, the profitability because you do know that cost of doing business in St. Lucia is also very high. Yeah. Your electricity, your water, um, your telephone, you know, basic utilities and maybe other services that has to be incorporated into the business. All these costs would affect their profitability. And so you find the challenge for them right now is to ensure that they have the cash flow to be able to get the business to be moving as, as, as it should. Mm -hmm. And these are stories that you hear all the time as we go out there and we meet our customers to find out how they're faring, what is going on with them, because you need to have that type of interaction with them. You get that all the time from especially small business people, because what is happening is that you have those small persons who do take their life savings and they will invest it into a small business. They want to be entrepreneurs. They want to work for themselves. They need to create employment. And in some instances, if they are working, they will create employment for somebody else to be there and to manage the business Correct. for them and so sometimes all these little things impact on the business you also have an issue in st lucia maybe um the work ethics to a certain extent of of employees um sometimes it does not go well for the business and it does not stimulate the type of growth that you need in the business so all these things are factors that would be affecting a small business person in st lucia who mm -hmm. would want to invest their little savings and their and their little monies into a business in st lucia now, you know, it's so funny um, that you have said so because I, two, three years ago, I had a, a discussion with the Prime Minister and I did, in fact, that's when he was going to put the VAT to tell him that I saw problems coming. I saw problems in the horizon. The, the VAT was implemented. Now, I am also a landlord and I have many tenants and I said repeatedly, out of 41 tenants I had at Gablewoods Mall for 18 years, I never lost a tenant. And two years after they put the VAT, I lost 31 tenants out of the 41. Wow. And they have been replaced by individuals that are struggling. And seven of them last more than six months. And that, in a nutshell, tells me what is going on. But a new scenario has developed at the mall, and not only with me, with other people, 
because one just has to take a, a, a walk at Bay Walk and go upstairs and see the condition of the stores. But now, at Gable Woods Mall, what I have had to do is that when the tenants come to me, um, they now say to me, most of them find, you know, that paying the fat is like a noose around their necks. So we find ourselves now having to swallow the VAT money, which is a 15% reduction, when we are already renting the properties at half the rent as we were getting 25 years ago. So the big question remains if, when you look at Gable Woods Mall that was built, say, 25 years ago, and there was no VAT, okay, how, and causing me to struggle, what does it say to a new investor who's going to invest? Who's going to take their money now? Because building costs have almost doubled, if not trebled, mm -hmm. um, with between the, the normal costs going up, which you can't blame the government for, but the, the, everything has gone up in St. Lucia. When wages go, when the cost of goods go up, wages have to go up. So there's, there's an increased cost. Now, apart from swallowing the, the, the VAT money, I, they, 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 have, they have now told me, look, we do work for people. We cannot get our money. So we have to wait sometimes two to three months. So now I've had to sort of go to work with them, collecting 50% of what we normal, normally got, swallow the VAT, and also give them time. Because, for instance, today only, there was one individual that was in, very much in a res. And I said to her, well, look at me. I've been carrying this thing for over a year. And I need, the end of the year is coming. We need to close our account. And I said to her, look, um, I'm prepared to guarantee a loan for you at the bank. You go and take a loan, pay me off, and keep your rents current, and then I will in turn, and, and you can pay the bank so much a month. And can you imagine the bank quoted her 18% interest? Oh, wow. 18%, okay? Now, I have a conscience, so I have to try to work around to see if I can um, assist the individual, because... It's, it's not only saying they go, as you rightly said, this lady employs four people. Mm -hmm. So if I allow that business to close, you know, that's four where we're going. But there's only employed. so much a business person can do. Mm -hmm. When you have a number of clients working with you and you multiply it by whatever it is, it becomes a large amount of money. Anyway, um, St. Lucia, we say all that to you because, you know, it's all well and good hearing stories around town of how things are difficult but we want to tell you how where well, the difficulty is all around mm -hmm. all around us and i'm not saying it can be fixed overnight but i have been a businessman for 55 years and i'm i'm not born yesterday i understand that there was a world recession i understand all of that but you know i feel that there, the time has come when we should really be looking beyond the horizon and changing our modus operandi of how to run the country. So this is where we are on that. The other question that uh, has come up is that um, I was around town recently and there were rumblings within the police force, which are worrisome, as this is our main security protection for the nation. There are strong rumors that key police officers are preparing themselves for the next move as leaks from the impacts have reached certain individuals. Now, St. Lucia, listen to me carefully. I said this is a rumor going around. I don't know how true it is. Now, we all know that the Prime Minister has not disclosed the entire content of the impact report. And as far as I know, the only two people that have the report is the Prime Minister and the DPP. Yet there are rumors around that the DPP has not received the report. So I don't know how these leaks may have come about. But have you heard anything about that? Um, I read on St. Lucia Online just a couple of days ago that uh, a police officer uh -huh. was traveling to the u.s uh -huh. and he was denied entry um into the denied. u.s he was denied entry uh -huh. and the rumor 
um, well, I can say it was on St. Lucia News Online. I don't know if it can be validated, yeah. but it said that this person was rumored to have been one of the persons whose name was in the impacts report. Right. And so obviously if, if that is true and if that is correct, mm -hmm. you know for sure that there, there are le um, leakages of the report. I have heard of the rumors of the report being leaked out. Mm -hmm. I've also heard of rumors that the DPP does not have the report. Yeah. Um, there's nothing about that we can substantiate. But St. Lucians have been calling for the longest time also for certain individuals to respond to the impacts report. And, and, and in my opinion, as I see it as an individual, how is it possible? that somebody can respond to a report that they have not seen they, they, they're not privy to the report I've heard people call in on certain former parliamentarians um, of the United Workers Party to respond to the impacts report and I'm saying well they can respond to a report only if they have access to the report and if they've seen it then they can respond to it but they have not seen it they do not have access to it I, I don't know how they can report to it but in light of, of, of that the police for sure we know that the statements that were made by the prime minister were very damning mm -hmm. to the police because the prime minister went on television and 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 made a lot of statements concerning the the former commissioner of police and about certain individuals about the actions of the police and he was very direct in terms of what some of the things that were said about the police were and obviously as a police officer to hear these things either about yourself or about your colleagues it certainly would have an impact on your morale and how you do your job because the public is now going to view you in, you know in, in, in an unfriendly manner and the yeah. police I know over the last couple of years have been really trying to do this community policing thing trying to get down and in touch with the people and to so, show a different side of the police and so that report could not have come at a worse time to affect that type of morale on the police force so. yeah. and you know um, whether it's coincidental or not um, one has to accept the fact that since all of that has taken place the crime factor has undoubtedly escalated so you know I'm asking myself a question there is our main protection, security protection for the nation. Um, I hate to use the word turmoil because it's a bit harsh, but there seems to be some unsettlement within the police force, which is worrying to business people and individuals because we pay a lot of taxes and, you know, we expect a certain amount of protection. Um, you know, and I am now hoping that the powers that be can start to understand that with all their good intention of wanting the country to move forward, the lack of proper security in a nation will be a determining factor as to which direction we will go. Because, you know, St. Lucia is just a small island, and um, let's face it, there are other places to go. People don't have to come to St. Lucia. You come to a place, I mean, by the Prime Minister's own comments, uh, you know, St. Lucia uh, has dropped in its ranking for doing business. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not saying that's the only reason. There are other reasons, because I heard him on television recently, and he was elaborating over the fact that um, uh, when people come in to do a level of work, they don't, um, they always give you a different figure when they finish. It's inconsistent. But you know, the crime minister cannot do everything because he's only one man. But if he's aware of that, he, the number of individuals, ministers, and permanent secretaries, and members, Bureau of Standards, and all that kind of thing. Bureau of Standards should not only be coming after you and me for certain things. Because if there's a standard and somebody is not working properly, I think it's only fair that they should hold some sort of a seminar to bring this, atten bring this to the attention of, 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 of people. Because, you know, you and I don't get money for nothing. We mm -hmm. have to go and borrow money, and mo borrowing money is expensive, and you have to invest. So there's a, and if the Prime Minister says that when he brings somebody to his own home and he makes up a, a deal with them um, for a couple hundred dollars, they want 40 or 50 dollars more, with one person, you can imagine some of us are employing 100 people, 200 people, you multiply that by that. I, I, already, 
that we are faced with the fact that this WhatsApp that they have, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's very difficult to have somebody. Um, we can't watch a person 24 hours a day, so we're already losing a lot of time and money. But again, one cannot hold the Prime Minister responsible for that. But these are the areas we are going through some very difficult times. And without people like you and me, you know, progressing in life, um, it's going to be very disheartening. St. Lucia, this is Open Mic. We have just come to the end of the first segment of our program. We'll be right back.